My career journey, I think, is a pretty interesting one in terms of I was essentially the youngest of five children. And as you know, um, in a lot of Asian families, there is a tendency for parents to want to have their children pick very stable careers. I was very fortunate that my brothers ahead of me were able to pick the doctor, pharmacist um, um, roles, if you will, and it did allow some freedom, if you will, for some of my other siblings and I to choose careers that were less traditional. So I have one brother who is a composer. Um, my sister was actually in the fashion industry and went to Paris right after high school, and my parents were very supportive of that. Um, I decided to follow a career initially in television, and so um, I actually worked in um, almost um, exclusively in the number five market. I was very fortunate that way in the San Francisco Bay Area because I was close with my parents and I didn't actually want to leave them because they were older since I was the youngest of five. So I somehow finagled my way and had the perseverance to kind of stay always around the San Francisco Bay Area and work my way up in television news to eventually become a weekend anchor for the ABC and then later the NBC affiliate here in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, after that, a very interesting thing happened to me. I was actually called by um, a producer that used to work for CNN that recently um, went to an internet um, startup, if you will, back in the day called Yahoo. <laughs> and it was really kind of a shock for me. I mean, I'd heard a little bit about internet companies, but it was also new back then. And he said to me that they're gonna start something which is like TV on the internet and would I be interested in potentially anchoring a show for them? And so what I did is, as I said, well, I'd be happy to talk with you. I kind of did my thorough research and I realized that it was going to be a real opportunity for the future. And so I went over to Yahoo and anchored um, their first streaming show, which was called Yahoo Finance Vision. And it was all about technology and finance and it was really exciting you know it was um, definitely startup mode so even though we were in a big company um, we had a lot of different business units and we all had to succeed or fail and that's kind of the way that Yahoo incubated all of the different groups I think the biggest thing that had an impact on me in that space in my career was the fact that I was able to do live streaming on the internet during the 9-11 attacks which was really a big deal because there was a lot of communication that was cut off in all different ways whether it was television or even phone but the internet was actually one of the few things that was still running and so we were able to bring Bring pictures through the internet and get phone calls from people and talk about that through instant message via Yahoo on the internet. So it was really kind of a very amazing experience. I feel after I had had that experience, I checked the box of having sort of a global audience because we had people writing in from all kinds of different countries at that time. Um, that that was kind of the pinnacle of my broadcasting career, if you will, and um, I moved on from that place to decide to um, do something that was a little bit different and back towards my community and I wanted to start a family. And so with that, um, I was actually working for the superintendent of San Francisco Unified School Districts to kind of help her communication strategy here locally um, in San Francisco. That was really gratifying for me because even though um, I had a very big private sector career, um, I actually was a public school educated child and I did grow up in San Francisco and I went to all public schools. So it was time for me to give back, if you will, to my community. Um, I felt like I helped her as an African-American woman um, make some big strides in a leadership position that was very, very sort of difficult in a very, very hard city where there was a lot of politics that she had to sort of deal with um, as an African-American woman, um, but a well-educated one that went to Harvard. So with that, um, she taught me a lot about leadership and like how lonely it is actually at the top, I think, to be a female um, sort of in that CEO role. Um, she also gave me the courage um, and the opportunities, which I thought was really great as a minority woman, to flex my muscle um, 
doing something called the superintendent's um, business council. And with that, I was able to meet um, other C-suite business leaders in San Francisco. Warren Hellman of Hellman and Friedman, of course, who is a big legend here in San Francisco. And I actually met um, a director that worked at McKinsey and Company. And after he and I working together for a while, he said, I'd like you to come work at McKinsey. So from that point, my career path moved on to McKinsey and Company. Um, I worked for directors of the firm, managing uh, global reputations, if you will. And I think that what I was able to learn at the highest level at McKinsey and Company is understanding how C-suite executives think, how they work, um, how they want to be efficient, what they want to achieve. And I really brought those skills, if you will, to the leaders forum. So I think one of the things that makes us very different is I think that I understand not just from a position of Asian American Pacific Islander executives, but actually global executives of, of all diverse races, sort of what they are looking at in terms of impact and performance. And I like to think that I bring that to the leaders forum and leverage that skill set to be able to make the experience Experience both fulfilling and worthwhile to them, but at the same time something where we are always seeing progress and we're actually moving the needle. When you ask about my career journey, about why I started the Leaders Forum, one of the things that really struck me um, that I learned at the White House was the fact that Asian American Pacific Islanders are set to be the majority minority by 2045. They actually pushed up the projection which originally was to 2060 to 2045 so 15 years sooner um, AAPIs are going to be talked about in this country like we talk about Hispanics and African Americans and their prominence in terms of their numbers and their votes so I felt it was really important to start getting our leadership into the circles of influence that matter now so that when it comes to that time we will have seats at the table and and circles of power, if you will, will be used to hearing from us and having those seats at the table to really make that impact meaningful. And so that all of us that care about the legacy of the next generation, which I think is very much a part of AAPIs, um, that we are ready and that we are really setting the table appropriately for generations to come.